Once you've started writing modules for Terraform, you might think to yourself, hey, wouldn't it be nice if I could test this module to make sure it actually does what I want it to do? But you know, I don't really want to learn Golang or something else. Terraform, isn't there something you can do to help me? Well, guess what there is? In Terraform 0.15, there's an experimental feature to test modules with HCL, and that's what we're going to investigate on today's Terraform Tuesday. <music> Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellman. It's Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. Like I said in the introduction, we are going to take a look at an experimental feature that's all about testing the contents of a module you're writing to make sure that the module actually does the thing you want it to do. That seems like a good idea. Now, I do want to say this up front. This is an experimental feature. It's very much in flux. So what you see in this video might not even be accurate <laughs> if it's a, you know, a month or so old. But as of right now, it is current and it is kind of working. So definitely worth checking out and maybe thinking about adopting in later versions of Terraform as they put some more polish on this feature, let's say. Before we dive into the topic, just two quick things I want to say. Number one, if you enjoy podcasts and you'd like to find a new podcast, check out my podcast, Day 2 Cloud. On Day 2 Cloud, Ethan Banks and I tackle the difficult and thorny problems of operating cloud on Day 2 and beyond. So definitely give that a listen. There is a link down in the description. And if you want to subscribe, I would sure appreciate that. Aside from that, if you want to support this show and other projects I'm working on, you can always support me on Patreon. Again, link down in the description. It starts at $2, which gets you early access to these videos and a weekly newsletter. Not a bad deal. All right, let's dive into this experimental testing feature. As I mentioned in my What's New in 0.15 episode, one of the things that was introduced with 0.15 is a new experimental feature that allows you to test what's in your modules. And the idea here is if you've done other software development in the past or worked with more complex scripting, maybe with something like PowerShell, you've decided that you want to test modules or functions with something like unit tests. And then you might want to test how those things fit together with something like an integration test. So far, Terraform hasn't had a solution natively for that, so people have baked up solutions outside of it. A good example of this is TerraTest, which allows you to write tests in Golang and then run those tests against a Terraform module to validate that the functionality you expect is actually there. Now, you might scratch your head a little bit and think, well, I'm deploying infrastructure as code, which is fairly deterministic. If something doesn't deploy, the API is going to say, that didn't deploy, and my code's going to error out. What's, what's this testing for? Well, it is true that it can get a little dicey when it comes to unit and uh, integration testing when it comes to infrastructure as code, but there are some things that you want to check. Let's say that you're setting up a web application that's going to be listening on port 8080, and you want to validate that once it comes up that you can actually get to the web application on port 8080, and then it gives you some sort of valid response. That's something you could bake into your testing. Maybe you are setting up some sort of VPC, and when the VPC is done provisioning, you want to validate that you can't get to things via SSH, that connections fail because there's a firewall rule in place or something like that. There's definitely things that you might want to test that wouldn't be part of the API call and response that you would get when you're provisioning the resource. So that's the idea behind it. And like I said, there was already a solution for it. Now, what does this new solution look like? Well, it's a little funky, but we're definitely going to get into it. And in order to get into it, I do have some demos. But before I do that, I just want to lay it out in general. Here's basically what's happening. In Terraform 0.15, there's a new built-in provider called Test. It's called Test. They got, they got real funky on this. And what that provider does is it has a single resource called a test assertion. And in that test assertion resource, you have some logical tests inside of it that determine whether the proper value has been returned or determine if something is true or false. And we'll get into how that works in a moment. 
those tests go into a configuration file. It's in HCL, so it's using Terraform's configuration language. And then those configuration files go into a subdirectory that's inside the directory tests. So you'll have your main module that has your regular configuration, the thing you want to test. And then you'll have a subdirectory called tests. And in that subdirectory will be child directories that have all the different tests you might want to run. That's the idea. So everything lives together and you could have it, you know, if you, when you check this into source control and you want to do integration testing, you could have it use those tests to perform that integration testing. And the mechanism by which that happens is a new command that's been added to the CLI called Terraform test. So when you run Terraform test from the main module, the root module, it's going to look for that tests folder and then run the tests it finds inside that folder. Right now, you can't tell it only run these tests and don't run those. As far as I can tell, it'll run everything that it finds in the child directories inside that tests folder. So just, you know, be aware of that. There's also some limited functionality in how you can pass variables because of the way it was implemented. But I think it's going to be confusing to try to describe that. So why don't we go over to Visual Studio Code and I'll just kind of walk you through one of the configurations so you can see how it's actually implemented. All right, here we are in Visual Studio Code. I have the directory open. It's 2021-05-04 module testing. Remember, I published these to my patrons a week in advance. So if you want access to this in a week in advance, you can go ahead and join the Patreon. If not, you can wait a week. No big deal. You can always find these files. They are on my GitHub on a repository called Terraform Tuesday. All right, I did put a nice readme in here that sort of describes all the things that I've gone over already. But why don't we expand one of the demo examples? We'll expand the basic test directory. So I'm going to go ahead and expand that. And you can see it has the main.tf. That's my root module. That's the configuration I want to test. And then there's a tests directory. And within that test directory, I have a single subdirectory called default. This would be my default test. There's nothing significant about naming it default. You can name it whatever you would like. But if you have some default tests, you could put them in there. And then in that child directory, I have one configuration file called tests underscore default.tf. Those are the tests I want to run against the root module configuration that's in main.tf. So first, let's look at what's in main.tf. And then we can look at the test file and see what's in there. So I'm going to go ahead and open up main.tf. And there's really only two things in here. It is super simple. We are defining an error, a variable, the API URL. Let's say we wanted to test a URL. And I have a default setting here of HTTPS google.com. And then for the output, I'm specifying an output, which is just echoing that variable value back out. So that's all that's in the main.tf. One variable and one output. We're keeping this super simple. All right. How do we how do we use this in our test file? All right, let's go over to tests and we'll scroll up to the top here. All right, we'll start at the top. We have to define some providers. Now remember, I said that this testing functionality is implemented as a provider called test. And the source for that is a built-in location. So you say terraform.io slash built-in slash test. That's that provider. And right now, there's no versioning around it, really. It's built in, and I guess the versioning's tied to what version of Terraform you're running. Obviously, you have to be on Terraform 0.15 or newer for this to work. And then we are going to use the HTTP provider to interact with the URL that we're testing. Okay. Now, within here, I've defined a local variable called API URL. And then I have a module here. And this one is a little, it's kind of like Inception, right? It's kind of tricky the way this works. In the source for this module, I'm calling it main, and I am sourcing the module from my root module. So I'm going up two directories, and I'm using the contents of that up two directories, which is basically my main.tf file. That's the module that I'm referring to. That's how I'm sourcing it. So now I have a module. And I can interact with any outputs from that module. So anything you want to test, you have to expose as an output, which you normally would if you're writing modules anyway. And in there, I can specify a variable to pass to this module. 
to give it some information I want to test. So I can override the default value of the variable I defined in main.tf. Remember that was google.google.com. And here I can specify a different variable and pass that to the module as I create it. Now I have a module and some outputs I can work with. I'm going to run some tests against the outputs from that module. Now, this one was a little confusing, and I actually cribbed this from the official documentation for it for the testing experiment. Basically, what this regex does is it breaks up the API URL into some groups using regular expressions, and it breaks it up into a scheme and an authority. And it breaks it up into those two parts and then stores it in a map so we can retrieve those values later. And it uses as the argument, the output API underscore URL from my main module. Remember, we created an output in main called API URL. That is the value that we're exposing from our module that we're going to test against. And then we get into the special resource that's part of the test provider, test assertions. This is the only resource that exists inside of this uh, provider at the moment. And within that resource, we have to define a few different things. The first we have to define is a component, and this is a required thing. It has to be in there. The component is really just for your, your own benefit, so you know which thing is being tested. If you had a whole bunch of tests, component gives you a better idea of which thing is currently being tested, and if it fails, which component failed in the test. So we're giving it a name. We're calling it API URL. That's the thing we're testing. And then you can have one or more nested blocks. And there's two different block types. There's equal and check. And the equal, you give it a name, so equal scheme. And then within the confines of that block, you can give it a description. That part is optional. And then you have to specify a got, which is the value that you actually receive that you want to test against. And then want, which is the value you want to check for. When it evaluates this, if got is equal to want, it tests to true. And if got is not equal to want, it tests as false. So this test would fail if got is not equal to want. What we're doing is we're looking at the scheme property of our URL and seeing if it evaluates to HTTPS. So basically you're saying if we're not using HTTPS, we're gonna fail this portion of the test. The next block type is check. And check basically is a Boolean condition that you're checking on. So again, we have description, which is optional, but you probably wanna put it in there because you wanna know what you're actually trying to test when and if it fails. And then the condition is a, an expression that will evaluate to true or false. Now, the function that's being used here is can. And can basically sees if the expression inside the parentheses of can actually uh, is successful or not. So it's running regex trying to find 8080 in the authority portion of the string. If it doesn't find port 8080, regex will come up with nothing. And because it comes up with nothing, can will evaluate to false, which means this test will fail. Okay, so that's what's in this block. Now, it goes on a little bit further. What if we actually wanted to query this URL to get more information and then test the results of that query? Okay, we could do that using a data source. So you can use data sources inside of your test. So we have a data source here called HTTP API response. We're gonna say this depends on the test assertion that we just went over. So if that first test assertion fails, don't even bother getting the data source because that failed. So we don't care what's being retrieved because it isn't running HTTPS and it isn't using port 8080. So skip over that. But if it is successful, retrieve, uh, send a HTTP request and then store the response in URL or store the response in the data source. And then we'll have a second test in here, a second test assertion and we'll call this the API response for the component. And in this one, we're going to check to see if valid JSON was returned. So we'll say, we'll give it a description. And then the condition is 
can again. So we're using can to test something. And then the thing that we're testing is J is does the function JSON decode execute successfully against the body of the response from the data source. If it does, we pass. If it doesn't, mm, we fail. Okay, so that's all of the tests. I know it sounds a little bit confusing, and I definitely recommend using it a little bit to get used to it. Also, the can function is a little hard to find in the Terraform documentation. So I believe it's under type settings or type conversions. So look under conversions and you'll find can, which is actually a pretty useful function for both this and validating variable values if you want to do that. Okay, so let's actually run this through its paces and see what happens when we run Terraform test. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the proper directory. So that was 202105. There we go. And we'll go into the basic test. And just like any other Terraform process, we'll run Terraform in it. And that will pull down the providers and all that kind of stuff. Now, the next thing we're going to run is Terraform test. What does Terraform test actually do? Terraform test looks for those tests in the subdirectories. When it finds a test, it runs the configuration in that test, which means it's actually going to create any resources that are defined in the module that you're testing. So if you're creating databases or VPCs or anything else, it's actually going to create those resources. So it's going to do a Terraform apply. It's going to run the tests. And then whether the tests pass or fail, it's then going to delete those resources. So let's go ahead and run Terraform test here and see what happens. So it's going to find that child directory that has the default test we want to run. And you can see it has created a dot Terraform directory inside that default directory because it's actually running a Terraform in it and then a Terraform plan against the test that it finds in there. And you can see our test failed. Our value is using HTTP, HTTP instead of HTTPS. And we know that because if we go up here, we can see we set the API URL to msn.com. I can go ahead and change that to HTTPS and run it again. And now that test will succeed, but the port 8080 will fail. There we go. Condition failed, port 8080. Okay. What if I update this one more time and add port 8080? Now, the first two tests should be successful, but it's not going to be able to get a valid response from msn.com that's not listening on port 8080 anyway. So I think the data source creation is actually what's going to fail in this process. But uh, the thing that I want to stress here is the way that it handles variables. Because you're running Terraform test, it doesn't support a dash var or dash var file at all. So any values you want to pass for variables to the module you're testing, have to be defined inside the test itself. So we've done that here by specifying a variable and then passing it to the module. Even if you put a terraform.tfvars file in that subdirectory, even if you set environment variables using tf underscore var underscore variable name, regardless of which ones you do, it's, it's just not going to work. So that is very unfortunate. All right. So it did fail and it failed because it was unable to make the connection because MSN is not listening on port 8080. If it had succeeded, then it would have run the JSON test and that would have failed. So lots of failures there. Maybe we could go with an example that's slightly more successful. So I have a second one set up here. Let's go to that one next. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. We'll go up one directory and we'll go into the web app test. Now, what does the web app test do? Let's close what we have open now, and we'll go ahead and expand this out and take a look at the main.tf. In the main.tf, we are using the Azure RM provider, and we're used setting up a remote backend using Terraform Cloud because I wanted to see what Terraform test would do if you used a remote backend and Terraform Cloud. Would it run the Terraform test remotely or would it run it locally? We'll see in a moment. And then I'm using the Azure RM provider. I've got a prefix and a location and a random ID, all of the things that you would expect. What am I actually creating here? I'm creating a container group that uses the Swagger API pet store container. So I'm actually spinning that container up and I'm going to pass it the Swagger host and Swagger URL so we can actually run 
requests against the pet store API if we want, so we can test whether or not it's functional. And I'm setting the port to 8080. So we could set up a test that validates that port 8080 is working, that it's using HTTP, and that we're able to get a valid JSON response from the Swagger doc. So those are things that I could set up and test. All right, well, that's kind of cool. Let's next expand out tests and see what tests I set up for this demo. In the tests, once again, I'm sourcing the proper test and I'm also using the HTTP data source. I'm sourcing the module main and I'm not passing any variables this time. So it's just gonna use whatever the default variable values are. I'm going to take the output from that module, which is an output called URL, which should be the URL or at least the fully qualified domain name of the function that I, of not the function of the Azure container group that I spun up. And I'm going to append 8080 to the end and also add HTTP to the front. Okay, and then I can run a data source to run a query against that endpoint. And I can add in the request headers application slash JSON. And then I have a test here. Test assertion is making sure that the content type of the response is correct. I wanna make sure that the content type is application slash JSON. So what I'll do is I will have an equal nested block and forgot I will test what the value is of the content type in the headers and I want it to be equal to application slash JSON. And then for my second test assertion resource, I'm going to check that the content is in fact valid JSON. So for that, I'm gonna use that same condition that we saw before. I'm gonna do a can JSON decode of the body of the response that I got from my container group that's running in Azure. So that's the setup. I'm spinning up a container instance on Azure that's running the pet store API. And then I just wanna validate that I get good responses from that pet store API. So what I'll do is go ahead and run Terraform test here, but first I need to log into Azure. So let's do an AZ login. And in a separate window, it will have me confirm my login. I'll go ahead and do that. All right, I am logged in and I'll just select the proper subscription that I want to do the testing in. So AZ account set. All right, now that that's all configured appropriately, I'm gonna go ahead and run Terraform in it to initialize the configuration. And remember, I'm using the remote back end on Terraform Cloud. So it's configuring that right now. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and run Terraform test and see where is this thing running? Is it running locally or is it gonna run in Terraform Cloud? So I'll go ahead and run Terraform test here. And this is going to create the actual resources in Azure. So while, that's do, while that is working through its things, let's go over to a browser and we're going to check on Terraform Cloud and also check on Azure to see what's being created there. All right, over in my Terraform Cloud instance, I'm using the Workspace Terraform Tuesday module testing. And if I look under runs, uh, there, there's nothing currently running. So obviously it's not running the Terraform test remotely. It's doing it locally in Visual Studio in my terminal. All right, let's go over to the Azure portal and take a look at what's going on with resource groups over there. So I'll click over there and go ahead and refresh my view. And now I have a resource group called tacos and then a bunch of random uh, strings. This is the resource group that was just created by the test that we're running. And within there, we don't have any resources yet. If I refresh a few times, we should see a container group get spawned there. There we go, there's my container group. We can go ahead into that container group and it gives us the fully qualified domain name. I should be able to grab that and go to HTTP colon slash slash the FQDN and then add port 8080 to the end. And once this container is done coming up, it should load the Swagger UI. There it is, there's the Swagger UI. Okay, so we know that our container is up and running and it should be running the tests against this container right now. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code and see what's going on. All right, it looks like all of our test assertions passed successfully, and we can see that it ignored our backend configuration because you know what? 
it didn't want to use it. It didn't want to use Terraform Cloud, probably because Terraform test doesn't isn't supported by Terraform Cloud or something along those lines, who knows. But all of our tests passed, and as part of the test, it should destroy the resources that it created during the test. So if we go back to the Azure portal, we'll go ahead and close the Swagger UI and go back to our resource groups. And if we do a refresh here, we can see that our taco resource group is gone. So the test successfully spawned the resources that we wanted to test against, ran the tests, those tests ran successfully, and then it destroyed the resources because the tests were done. Now I ran this a few times and I found that if some portion of the test fails, not the test itself, but the data source, let's say fails, it won't actually destroy the resources that were created. So this is an experimental feature. There's gonna be some bugs, there's gonna be some bumps, but it's definitely interesting to dig into and see what you can do from a writing module standpoint to start doing unit and integration testing for your Terraform modules. That's going to do it for me for today. Thank you, as always, so much for watching. I want to thank my patrons for supporting me. You can see them. They should pop up on the screen right about now. So thank you, all of you, for supporting me at the Big Burrito or Empanada level. That's very much appreciated. If you're interested, again, the link is down in the description if you'd like to support me. If that's not your thing, you want to subscribe to the channel, I do appreciate that. Give the video a like, you know, do all of those things. Don't worry about the bell. I don't like the bell, and you shouldn't like it either. And uh, that'll do it for Terraform Tuesday. Thank you again so much for watching. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. Hey, you know, so if you watch to the end of the video, I, I sometimes will show you something. So this is interesting. I got this and I don't remember what it came from, but it's a little USB. But what's really cool is it has a slot for a micro SD card that goes right down in the USB. And then when you plug this in, it becomes a thumb drive. You can flash the micro SD card and then just pop it out, do another one. If you have a Raspberry Pi, this thing is super helpful. So if you can find them, highly recommend it. That's it. Bye.